Okay, we just cut a Victolic groove, and I forget what the other brands are. Victolic is the one that started those originally, and you can see there's another groove there. We're doing six of these little pups for a customer, and they're doing some changes on piping, and they don't really know what length they need. They're going to have us just bevel the other end, and they'll use those for weld-ons. But I got thinking, while well, I know about Victolic pipe, some machine shops, some industrial people never see them. You see them a lot in mining, in mills. Um, here is what's going on. This one here is ones we have not installed yet. Our, we're going to run Victolic down the whole length of our each wall for airlines. So we've got some serious airlines to come down. And we've got uh, elbows and tees and all kinds of stuff. But that shows you the same thing. The way this works, you have a gasket that goes on here and you, you lube these up and you stretch the gasket over and it seals on this front part of the pipe. And the pipe can be pretty rough, really. The Victolic is a lip, like a lip seal, but it also the pressure inside pushes this out. So it pushes the lip into what you're sealing. And like with air, if you were just using dry air and you never lubed these, they're going to start leaking and you're going to not like it. Um, there's some things where rust is a problem, if you, you know, different. They're not perfect, but they're very flexible in what you can do with them. And part of why I'm doing that instead of, let's say we did screw pipe all the way down. We had screwed fittings. Well, if you want to add a T in, you decide you want to add another fitting in, it's kind of rough. Where with this, you loosen the clamps on one section, you pull that section out, you cut a little bit out, put a couple grooves in it, put it back up with a T, and you're running for more pipe, more uh, fittings. The grooves are used for the physical holding. That's what they do. And mo pretty much all of the fittings, there were some stamped ones I saw years ago, but most of them are cast. And they're not machined at all, but they do a good job of getting an accurate casting. They want you to really machine the groove accurately. Um, it's not normally needed to be as accurate as they say, but accuracy is still good. So I'm not going to say to make them sloppy. You will find places where you're making these, though, where you don't have micrometers. And there is a suggested depth off the outside of the pipe that you go to. And um, they say just use that for a starting number and don't use it well. A lot of places you use it for the whole number and just go a little, squeak just a little bit deeper normally and you won't have real problems. Now also some of this on the pipes besides what I'm doing is called cut groove. They also do a roll groove where there's a machine that rolls a groove in. That's used on, on thin pipe which this is schedule 40 here so this actually you could do the rolling. On Schedule 80, I don't know if you could do it or not. I kind of think you wouldn't be able to at all. I, we've done it Schedule 40 a lot of places I've been at. Schedule 20 and 10, you'll see the rolled grooves all the time on irrigation systems. Real common. You'll see a lot of this piping also for fire, fire systems in buildings. You go look around, you see all the fire equipment. When you look at the big pipes, normally they start out with like a five inch pipe. And they'll use five inch, they'll use three and a half. On fire systems, they try to use at not common. It's not totally abnormal, but not common sizes so people aren't tempted to grab the fittings or to cut into it for thinking it's something else. They try to keep it a little bit different so you're not likely, besides the painting, the marking, they also use different sizes so that you're not mixing your stuff up. Now, uh, there's another one they've got also is they have what they call a flexible groove spec. Normally you're cutting it, and if somebody doesn't say anything, you're cutting what's a rigid spec. The idea of a rigid spec is these two ends are pretty close together. With a flexible spec, you bring this a little bit closer, and I don't remember if the groove is wider or not, but it's set so that you can have a little bit of movement in the joint. Same coupling, you just make the joint a little bit different, where normally rigid, you're trying to get your pipe to stay pretty straight anyway. But if you have something where you have a whole bunch of pipe for a long distance and you want to curve it around, um, but it also is not going to stay necessarily where you put it, because it's more like a hose. Each of these joints can flex. Most of the time, it's not used. Once in a while, it is requested. 
you will find, and you can get this online, you used to have to get a hold of your Victolic people or, I can't think of the other names, I'm not trying to be, you know, the, the Kleenex guy, but that's, that's what it is, Victolic is the main, main one I've used, they're easy to find, and they have, you can go online and you can get their book, which gives you all the specs for what sizes things are supposed to be. Actually cutting the grooves, which we can show this groove being started cutting in a little bit. The nicest way when you're cutting it is to make a tool that cuts the full width all at once. In this case, it's 3 8 wide. Let's add some 3 8 by half inch high speed steel. So I just sharpen it up where I can plunge in with like a cutting car, uh, cutoff tool, but wide. Now, what you also can do Say you got just one of these to make. You don't want to go grind a tool. You just, you got your stuff, but you got your cutoff tool. Just step it over. It's not a big deal. But when you step it over, step over the far left, the far right, put one in the middle, and then pick up the stragglers. Don't get to where you're off of a full cut. Either come right in the center of something that's left, that's been cut on the right and left, or come on new material so that your cutting's even, because your parting blade will try to move. And I do that sometimes for uh, hydraulic seals, too, for cutting grooves for them. You're, you're not supposed to, but um, on, on this, it's okay. This is within specs because the surface finish. Hydraulic, they're not. But if you're careful and you get a good finish, nobody cares. It works fine. I've done it in hydraulic shops, and it saves a lot of time sometimes. Um, the way I started out with that was we had multiple tools for the different widths, you know, and you're trying to come in nice, or you come in and you turn half of it with a tool and make a little radius that might be there and turn and fuss around and do all this. But you find out after you come in with a tool and then the tool had been worn and resharpened, you need to move over 20 thousandths and do it again. There's a point where you just say, well, I could just use pretty much any tool and go over as many times as I need to. If you're just doing one of them, saves a lot of time making extra tools. So, uh, you can see over from the other side, the slower turning lathes are an advantage. And that was part of why I originally purchased this particular lathe, both, both the shipping weight, this lathe shipped at, uh, it was something over 8,000 pounds, comparable lathes were under five. And so I thought that was a good plus. You'll notice that the pipe is out around when you first start cutting. And if you go faster, it will chatter. And yes, my bit is slightly uh, not square on across the face, but again, you have a plus or minus 20 thousandths depth on the spec for this, and we're within specs when we get done, it's fine. I have my digital set up over there so I know where I'm going to for the cut. It's slow, it takes a little while to get there. I don't think we want to bother watching it all, do we? I don't see the point. Yeah, cameraman doesn't know. Let me know in the comments. I don't see the point. It's the same thing, just longer. Another few minutes. I guess you could just quit watching. That would be the other one. We could go ahead and finish it, yeah. And then you can just quit, quit watching at that point if you think that, because we're not going to add anything, except for maybe a quick quip at the very end. You never know. Sometimes I throw those in. I'll have to try and think one up. Oh, one thing here that is a little note too is while you can do a short piece just directly in the chuck, it's actually easier having some length to it and then putting a cone or a secondary chuck on the far end. It's just more stable. So, and since he brought fairly long pieces to work with and wanted them just about eight inches, I'm working off longer pieces and then, uh, then we'll cut them.
you get when you're doing big pipe, if you're doing this on like 30 inch pipe or something, you may find your lathe just does not go slow enough for a full width tool for the groove. You may have to do it in small segments or even do it as a turning job, just part in the center and turn a little left and right because you just, you can't go slow enough to keep the vibration down sometimes. And it's also common on these that you'll be working off of a steady rest. And why did I end up slightly crooked on my face? I started out with it real square, and then my tool post wasn't tight enough, so it rotated away a little bit. And then I rotated it back, and I rotated it back slightly too far. And I just didn't feel like making it exact. It's, it's fine for what it is. There are tolerances. And I hate, uh, like one job I currently have, I have a customer that gave me a job and they claim they've done a lot of machine work and stuff, but there are no tolerances on this drawing at all. And obviously I know he's not wanting me to charge him for making it perfect from one end to the other over 85 inches long, but um, Sometimes when you can't pin them down, you just make up your own tolerances. I know what he's using it for. I know what he needs. And uh, that's what we'll end up doing. We won't discuss it more because we don't want to offend him if he happens to figure out who he is. And you get springing in here. You'll turn into a certain, oops, right there, she spun a little. You turn into a certain size and it will, uh, it will set there a while before it cuts to the full size. And since I'm going so slow, the clutch on the machine does not fully stop it, the clutch and the brake. That's why it kept going. Because it's got lots of reduction and it just a little bit of drag, it goes ahead and drives. And the tool's probably not as sharp as it was when I started, but I only got two more and I want to get done with this without remaking a tool or fussing. I mean, yeah, you just got to be practical on some of this. Things that need to be snickety, you need to go get some purrs, but other stuff, it'll be okay. If you're doing plastic pipe with, with uh, groove pipe, groove lock, that's the other real common name, is groove lock. And then there's something with an A that's made in China or Taiwan. I actually looked at that a little bit when I bought all the Victolic for my shop here, but the Victolic was the least expensive for the air fittings. They actually had a better price than anybody else. The uh, Groove lock, it took them a long time to even get back to me and tell me what the price would be. I don't remember what I paid, but I know the Victolic was under half the price of anybody else at the time. Uh, yeah, plastic pipe, I was starting to mention. Plastic pipe, they actually use a little router. They have a tool that has a uh, router bit that runs around with the regular router and it goes around the pipe and cuts the groove that way. There are also tools for pipe threaders that will let you cut the, uh, cut the groove on a pipe thread. 
sometimes it's a totally different tool, other times it's just a insert that you put in in place of the uh, thread. And I am using one of my cheapy mics today because this is just that quality. We are at 4.331. It's supposed to be 4.334 to minus 20 thousandths. So we're within spec. And if I didn't have a micrometer of some sort, I would not feel bad of just checking it with depth. Generally, if you're doing it by depth, what you want to do if you're on a lathe is measure your depth, how far in you're going from once you get a full round cut. You'll find that pretty much all your pipe has some extra material, sometimes an extra material that's all the way around, but generally it's extra material that makes up for their out of round manufacturing. So they're pretty close to diameter once you get them round. That's not a guarantee, but that's usually you're there or maybe another 10 to 20 thousandths under on a pipe. And yep, no quips.